Okay, in this uh, class, we're going to look at some advanced features of Python. Uh, basically, lambdas and classes. So, let's look at a Python program first. So, we start with a hash bang and use a bin Python 2.7. So, the interpreter for this program would be Python 2.7 in the, on the Unix system. But it will also work on Windows by if you just invoke it manually by calling Python and the script name. First thing we normally do is we import the bunch of libraries that we need all the time in all most Python programs. One is the OS, string, system, glob, operator, array, and it'll be a whole lot more. You let use it all the time, so you might as well import it at the beginning. And then the thing is in the main program we start with the thing is that this script could also be used like a library, but if you call it as a as a main program, then this part will get executed. If name is main, that means the caller is expecting it's called this script specifically. It's not imported by another library. Then otherwise, it, this part becomes uh, dummy and it gets imported into another another program. You can use it, this program like a library. In this case, if it is a main, this program is main. Then this is print Python path equal to this is a string from single coded string comma os os this os dot get environment python path and double string is also double coded string is here and then what you can do is add sys dot path dot append tilde is home tilde python so you add tilde python your home directory if you have a py directory called python it gets added to your path the next thing you do is so check that this is all indented so by two characters so it's hard to read, but that's how Python is. And so if everything's inside there, if all these lines. And if length of sys dot argv, this sys is here, and is equal to one, that means there's only one argument. That means the user did not supply any arguments and it's only the file or the script name you have. Then you can do print and send it to sys dot standard error and saying usage. And then you can use backslash means con continued. And in this case, the indentation also uh, goes haywire. There's no need for indentation. It's actually part of the last line. Saying uh, usage and the command name, whatever script name, and options and arguments. And then all you could do is sys dot stdr dot write usage options write and arg zero. So in this case, the percentage acts like a formatter, sprintf. And this sys dot argv zero gets uh, put into this percentage s. Then you say sys dot exit. So you can exit if there's only no arguments given. Otherwise, what you do is for file name in sys dot argv print file name comma file name. So this is string equal to file name. So this prints whatever input is given and prints it out file name equal to and it's a for loop. The colon is here. It is indented. So for each ar extra argument, it gets it loops over it and prints it out. And you can see that there's no need for parentheses because print is an operator function in Python 2.7. It might differ in 3. So there's one big problem in Python is that Python 3 is not a 2.7 programs may not run in Python 3. So you have to check which version of Python your company is using before you install and start learning the packages. Many people are still using Python 2.7 in spite of being really old because python 3 has a lot of different syntax and it breaks the old syntax so one thing we can look at is parameter passing in python and this is in 27 the three ways of passing a parameter one is that you just pass the argument so def means a function define a function and function name pf is a function name and colon is the end of the function and in what is intended is part of the function so Python makes it really hard to copy paste code from Stack Overflow because indentation may change or it may be invisible. Tabs are like invisible to, to the eye. Like how many spaces is a tab? It depends on the editor setting. So here in this case you say print A equal to A. A is object. A gets printed out here. And or you can use star B. So B is a tuple. You can say star B. So here we can see example. Uh, we'll see the example out here calling example and C is a dictionary dictionary means a hash table and in 
so C and it uh, says star star C. So there are three different ways of passing parameters. And there's also a keyword we'll look at later. So you say A equal to 1. So when you say PF1, so A is 1, B is empty tuple, and C is empty dictionary. And if you give 1, 2, 3, so 1 is 1, A gets 1, and everything else goes in the second argument, a tuple, B2, two, 2, 3. And C is empty. And if you want to uh, specify C, you need to give like this in the green. A is 1, B is 2, 3, 4, 5, and then the keyword arguments are there. They become a dictionary. So argument E is 1, F is 1. That's how you do parameter passing. And now let's look at lambda functions. They're also known as anonymous functions. That means functions without names. You can call them by just directly defining them at the time of call. So regular functions have names. So you define a function called square, square x, and it input is x and returns the x raised to the power 2. So when you say, then you say print sq8, you call it. You say it prints 8 raised to 2, which is 64. Or you could directly define it as a lambda function. That means you just, instead of function name, you just put a lambda. So that comes from lambda calculus. And if you're more interested, you can look up lambda calculus on Google or on Wikipedia. So you say lambda x and then colon, then expression x raised to 2. That's a object. This is a function. So what you notice in Python is functions are first class objects. You're defining it at runtime and assigning it to another object. And if you can do that, you really can do a lot of things. Uh, in Python, that it cannot be done in C. So at runtime you're defining a function and it's a first class object. You can pass it around any way you want. So then you, then you call the square error 8. It prints 64 again. So you could even make a factory out of it. So in this case, make incrementer is a, is a function that returns another function. And that what it returns is a function, lambda function, unnamed function that takes input x and returns x plus n. n is the the incrementer count that you give at the time of creating the function, unnamed function. So you make f is a function, make incrementer 2. So it returns lambda x, x plus 2. And make incrementer 6, it returns lambda x, x plus 6. So if you call f, it prints f42, it prints 44. And if you call g42, it prints 6 plus 42, which is 48. And you could, not only that, you could create an incrementer function and call it immediately. So this function adds 22 to this input and then immediately you apply the argument 32 to it. So you get 55 as the output. So that comes from lambda calculus and combinator logic also. If you're more interested, you can look up on Google or Smullyan has a nice book on it also a lot of combinatorial logic in his books so prime number so let's see how to define prime numbers in python first your numbers so you can just call a function range so you say range 2 to 50 so it is 2 3 4 to 50 or you could say for k in the range 2 to 8 and then k is in 2 3 to 8 so the the thing about python is that it also has a lazy valuation if you use some fancy constructs like yield, but we'll look at it later. And number is, how do we look at this? Number is filter lambda x if x is equal to k or x mod k equal to 0 and on numbers. So what is this function doing? Basically, you're going, you have, you have a set of numbers, sequence of numbers from 2 to 50. And then you're going from 2 to square root of 50, which is uh, number nearest number larger than square root of 50, which is 8. And then you're removing all numbers which are multiples of any k using this filter function. And eventually you're left off with these numbers, uh, which are prime numbers from this numbers. So nums you're filtering out uh, numbers which are divisible by one of these k's. That's how you generate uh, prime numbers one way so let's look at some more examples so you can have a string sentences it is raining cats and dogs 
So one thing you notice is uh, the new line is the end of a statement. You don't need to put semicolon. And then sentence dot split. It splits the sentence. The object can has this object has functions attached to it. The split is a function with no arguments. And then you get a set of words. It gets it is raining cats and dogs. Then you can apply the the, the function map and then give it a function and give it a, an argument list of words. So this applies this function to every element of the words and this is the function is length. So you're mapping the, the function length on the words. So then you get lengths to 2, 2, 7, 4, 3 and 4. Lengths of each word. And you could do it on a single line also. You m print map lambda length and then the sentence split. So uh, it is pretty compact and it's doing a lot of calculation in a single line. So and let's see what is another uh, feature of Python which is called list comprehension. So suppose you want a vec uh, vector list, you can say define a list using a, a function. So the for x in vector, x in 2, 4, 6, you're saying this is a list of this lambda function 3 into x. So 3 into 2, 3 into 4, 3 into 6. So you get this list. So this list is, uh, this is how you write uh, list comprehension. But it gets pretty ugly uh, if you keep nesting it. But it's okay for single line code. For example, out here is for i in 1 to 6, you are defining this. So you are basically c computing the, the, the value of pi using this approximation 355 over 113 for rounding by i at decimal point so 3.1 3.14 3.142 3.141 3.419 so all of them are correct till six five decimals so that's list comprehension now let's look at more things so you have a dictionary dictionary is like a name value pair and you can also refer to uh, a dictionary by using square brackets. The tell of Guido is 4127. And you can easily create records and structs in Python. So how does that work? So you just create an object called record. You say object and pass means it's an empty class. There's nothing inside it. And then this is a constructor record. It's a class and you say record no no parameters and then you get x. X is of the type class record then you can add using dot you can add members to x x dot name is john x dot address is usa so that's how you get a record so x is a record and the the, the values inside it could be any arbitrary set of combinations that you think of so you're not limited by predefining the type of structures so now let's look at object oriented how can you do object oriented in python First you define a base class. Inside the base class you define a constructor. And you, and all the member functions take the uh, pointer to the self. Self is a object that you're operating on and the value. So you think self dot data is the value. You set the data and display print self dot data. So it's printing the data of that object. And now you can inherit from the first class is one object you can have another object called second class it is inheriting from the first class and you override the base class display with print current value equal to and you're using format statement the self dot data is a string here it is a simple one you're overriding in the second class and the third class you can actually derive from the second class and you have a base uh, in constructor out there which is in it as soon as you create it this function is called the value is basically save some value in it and then you have a add function so this uh, operate this underscore underscore add operates like the plus function so basically it takes the object data and adds the other argument to the data and returns a new object of the third class and the multiplication similarly is using the star so if you have a two third class objects you can multiply them together it will take the 
data of this guy and another object and add them multiply them together and store it in the current date object so let's see examples of it so you have a third class abc and you give it an input abc string it's a display it's a current value equal to abc third class and if you add xyz to it so add calls up make a new instance so what you get is a plus xyz so a was abc so then you look at b dot display this current value is abc uh, concatenated with xyz and if you multiply by 3 so it's called it changes the instance in place basically you're not creating a copy in this case so if you display a dot display so a actually got changed it became abc 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 so that's about some advanced features in python and best way to learn is by doing it yourself. Thank you.